Welcome to the channel. This is the second video of a two-parter of my top home assistant helpers. So in total, over the two videos, we'll have covered my top 10 of 19 helpers. If you don't see a specific helper that you're particularly interested in, then let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can put together a video specifically for the helper that gets the most comments. So let's dive on in. So as the name suggests, this is a helper that allows us to create a user-defined variable of a date and or time. We can build this into a dashboard that allows us to trigger an automation based on this. Let's continue with our scenario and create a helper that a user inputs a time on a dashboard that will turn on the AC that will stay on for one hour before turning off. Now this might be an unrealistic scenario but once you have learned the principles, you can apply this to many different user cases, such as creating a birthday reminder at a specific date and time, or a sprinkler the specific time of day it turns on and off independent of the day. So let's create our helper. Firstly, we need to navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, Helpers, Create a Helper. Select the date and or time. Give it a name. In this case, I'll give it one of AC on time. Give it an icon. I'll give it air conditioning. Since in our user case, we only want to record a time, we'll select the time and we'll press create. Now let's navigate to our tutorial dashboard. To be able to add a card, we need to be able to edit the dashboard. Press the three dots in the top right hand corner, edit dashboard. Let's add a card, search for and select the entity card. Now let's add our input helper. Now press save and press done. Now by pressing the entity card, we can update the time. Now let's go and create an automation based on this helper. Settings, Automations and Scenes, Create an Automation, Create an Automation. Let's add a trigger. Select Time. Select Value of a Date Time Helper or a Timestamp Class Sensor. Press the X in the At Time. Search for the helper that you just created and select. Now well, let's create our actions. Add Action. Call Service. The service that we're going to be calling is Climate turn on. Select your entity, which is going to be our air conditioner. Now we can also set the temperature at this point in time as well with the following action. Call a service, climate, set temperature. Choose your entity, in our case, the air conditioning. Now because we've turned the air conditioning on, we want one hour to pass and then we want to turn the air conditioning off. So we want to add an action, wait for a time to pass, set a duration of one hour. Add an action, call a service, search for Climate turn off. Select our entity, which is our air conditioning, and press save. Give it a name and press save. Now, based on the entry for the time helper that is on our tutorial dashboard, at 7.30 p.m., this automation will trigger. It will turn on the air conditioning, it will set the temperature, it will wait for one hour, and then it will turn the temperature off. Our next helper is the input text helper. This helper allows the user to define values that can be controlled via the front end and can be used within conditions of automations. As a pro tip, this can also be configured in password mode, which obscures the text. So in this user case, let's create an automation that will restart Home Assistant when the user enters a password. Text will be obscured and not visible. The password will be more than five characters and less than 10 characters and alphanumeric. So let's create our helper. Settings. Devices and Services, Helpers, Create Our Helper. Search down for Text, give it a name. In our case, Restart Password. Give it an icon, in my case, Lock. As per the user case, we'll give it a minimum length of five characters and a maximum length of 10 characters. We'll make the display mode password. In the regex pattern, we're gonna be copying the following. I'll put a link in the description as to what this means. Now press Create. Now let's navigate to our tutorial dashboard. Edit the dashboard with the three dots in the top right hand corner. Add a card and we're searching for an entity card. Select, clear out the entity and insert the entity that we just created. Press save and press done. Now let's create an automation that checks this password and restarts Home Assistant accordingly. But we'll deactivate this action as we don't want to restart Home Assistant really. We'll also reset the password that you just typed in that was obscured to null so that the password is not visible. Go to settings, automations and scenes, create an automation, add a trigger. In the search entity 
in the entity search for this, we'll be using the input text helper for the password. Select state. In the entity, type in our restart password and select. Now we'll need to give this a trigger ID. Press the three dots in the top right hand corner, edit ID. Give it an appropriate name for a trigger ID. In this case, password change. We will have a condition to check the password value, but this will be in the action section and not in the global section. So therefore we do not need to have a condition at this point. Now let's add an action. Select our choose. Open the drop down on option one. Add a condition. Triggered by password change. Now let's check the password. Add a condition. Select state. In the entity, type out restart password. In the state section, set your password. In our case, password with a capital P. Now let's add our actions. Our first action should be to clear out the value that we stored in the password reset. Add action, call service, input text set. Select our entity, which will be our restart password. In the value, type in null. Now let's restart Home Assistant with another action. Call the service, Home Assistant Core Integration Restart. Remember the three dots in the top right hand corner and to disable this, because we're not actually going to be restarting Home Assistant with this integration. Now if, now if the automation was triggered, but the password did not match, we need a second option. Add an option, add a condition, add a trigger, select password change. For this, we will not check to see if the password matches because it would have gone through the previous option if it had. For this one, we'll reset the restart password. Since we've already covered this in the option above, if we press the three dots to the right of this, copy, scroll down into our option two actions, we can add an action and we can paste the service. And this will reset the reset password back to null for us. We can now press save and give it an appropriate name and press save. If we now split screen between our dashboard and our automation, now let's check the results. What we'll do is we'll go into option one and option two, and we will change the reset of the password across to option one or option two, and then we'll test on both conditions. To do that, open option one, scroll down to the actions where the password is reset. We're gonna change the null value to option one. Now we'll scroll down into option two, expand option two, scroll down to the actions and expand the action. Inside here, we'll change the null to option two. Now we'll save. Moving back into our split screen onto our pa reset password, we'll type in an incorrect password. This should bring up option two. Option two is displayed. Now let's change the password to the correct password, typing in password with a capital P and pressing enter. We can now see option one. The automation is working successfully and routing into the appropriate options. Timers are much simpler in concept, but do have some special functions that means that they could be a video all on its own. But for the purposes of this already long video, we'll only cover the basics. Basically, a timer has a state of idle, active, or paused. Idle means the timer finished or was canceled. Active means the timer is still running. Paused, as the name suggests, means the timer has been paused. However, they also have events associated with the timer. These determine if the timer has been canceled finished, started, restarted, or paused. So as you can see, you have a lot of different controls and checks that you can perform with timers. We'll be focusing on creating a timer, setting a timer, performing an action based on a timer. So let's create our timer. Go into settings, devices and services, helpers, create a helper, scroll down and search for timer. We'll give our timer a name. We'll call it the two minute timer. Give it an icon of timer. Set the duration at two minutes and press create. Now let's put this on an entity card on our dashboard. Scroll to your dashboard, enter the three dots in the top right hand corner, edit your dashboard, add a card. We're gonna put this on a mushroom entity card. If you don't have the mushroom cards installed, go and watch the video on the hacks installation on the link in the description above. Select your mushroom entity card. Enter in your timer into the entity. As this is a mushroom entity card, we have multiple different actions that can be applied. If you scroll down, you will see there is a tap action, hold action, and double tap action. Select the tap action. Select call service. The service we're going to be looking for is timer start. And select, choose your entity, which is our two minute timer. Scroll down. Now select the hold action. Select call service. In the service, select timer pause. Now select our entity, which is our two minute timer. Scroll down. Now select double tap action. Call service. The service we're going to be calling is timer finish. And select. 
select our entity, which is our two minute timer. Now press save and done. Now we can start, pause and stop our timer, but the entity card will not show the time remaining on our timer. There are many ways to do this, but the easiest I've seen is using the Hacks front end card called Timer Bar Card. I won't go through the installation of this card, but if you watch the Hacks installation video, it will show you how. Now let's add this card to our dashboard. Three dots in the top right hand corner, Edit Dashboard. Add a card. Search for Timer Bar Card and select. As this card cannot be edited in the UI, you will need to enter a single line of YAML code. Enter the following. Entity colon space, and then the name of your timer, and press save, and now press done. Now when you start the timer, you will see the time remaining on the time. Let's do that now. You can now see our timer is started. Pressing and holding will pause our timer and stop our countdown. Pressing again will reactivate the timer. Double tapping will reset our timer, and no time will be displayed in the timer countdown bar. Our next helper will be the drop down helper. This allows you to predefine a list of values that you can assign to an entity. It's particularly useful in limiting the options and providing a fixed value input based on predefined options. In our example, we'll create a drop down helper that will allow our user to set a lighting mode for the home. Our states will be watching TV and sleeping, but you can add additional states or adjust accordingly, as this simply demonstrates the drop down helper. Let's create our helper. Settings, Devices and Services, Helpers. Create a helper, search for, and select drop down. Give it a name, House Lighting Mode. Give it an icon, Floor Lamp. Scroll down, our first option will be None. Press the Add button. Our second option will be Watching TV. Press the Add button. Our third and final option will be Sleeping. Press the Add button. Now press the Create button. Note that you can change the order of the options by using the nine dots to the left of the selection. Now let's add this to our dashboard. Navigate to the Tutorial Dashboard. Press the three dots in the top right hand corner and edit your dashboard. Select Add a Card. We're going to be searching for the Mushroom Select card and select. Clear out the entity and find a House Lighting Mode and select. We won't be using any of the more advanced options here so you can leave those alone. Press save and done. Now let's create our automation that checks the value of the dropdown. The logic will be, if it's set to null, no action will be taken. If it's set to watching TV mode, then all the lights will turn off and the lounge lights will turn on to 50%. If it's set to sleeping mode, then all the lights will turn off and the master bedroom lights will turn on 1% for 30 minutes. As we're focusing on the functionality of the helper, I've created this already. Also, I've added the lights to the dashboard so that you can see the functionality is working. Now we're in split screen mode. On our left, we have our automation. On our right, we have our dashboard. Now if we set our helper to watching TV, we see the watching TV has triggered and we see that the lounge lights have turned to 50% and the master bedroom lights are off. Now let's change our helper across to sleeping mode. We'll see the sleeping mode is triggered we'll see the lounge lights have turned off and the master bedrooms have turned on to 1%. They will stay on for one hour and then they will turn off. Our final helper is the toggle helper. This is probably the simplest of all the helpers. This is a simple binary helper that can have a value of on or off. For this helper, we'll create a toggle helper and include it into an existing automation in my home. This automation turns on a diffuser at 5 p.m. each night and turns it off at 6 p.m. The toggle helper we'll create will check if this automation should run or not. So let's create the helper. Settings, Devices and Services, Helpers, Create a Helper. Scroll down, Toggle Helper. Give it a name, Diffuser Suspended. Give it an icon, Fan Dash Clock, and press Create. Now let's add this to a dashboard. Navigate to our tutorial dashboard, press the three dots, edit your dashboard, add a card. Search for and select the button card. Empty out the entity ID. Now search for and select our toggle helper. Now press save and press done. Now let's open our automation for the diffuser. Settings, automations, and search for our automation. Select. We won't need to change anything else in this automation, but we will use our toggle helper in the condition. Add a condition, select a state. In the entity ID, put our toggle helper. Make sure you set the state for off. This means that when the condition is met, 
This will allow the automation to run. If the toggle helper is set to on, then the condition is not met and the diffuser will not work. This means that if the diffuser is suspended and the state is on, then the condition is not met and the diffuser will not turn on at five o'clock. So if you watch video one and video two, that is my complete top 10 home assistant helpers. Sorry about the length of the video, but we've covered a lot of information. I hope you got something out of the videos and now understand how valuable helpers are. Without helpers or user definable variables, as you coders call them, some of our automations would simply not be possible. There are another nine helpers that I have not covered. These are low utilized helpers according to Home Assistant Analytics. Links in the description below for the official top 10 and ones that I don't use frequently. But if you'd like a video for those, then please let me know in the comments below. Likewise, if you'd like a deep dive on any of the specific helpers, let me know in the comments as well. So what are your favorite helpers? Do you use helpers a lot? Or is this a topic that you shy away from? Where do you think the Home Assistant team should focus their attention to enhance the existing or build new helpers? Let me know in the comments. Until then, see you on the next one.